Well, we're going to bring in our business editor, Sean Pellegrin, now. He's uh, starting off with the impact of the killing of uh, Hamas's political leader in Iran on g global oil markets, Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, on that news, uh, global oil benchmarks uh, jumped over uh, fears that the latest developments could turn the uh, Israel-Hamas conflict in Gaza into a wider regional one, which would fully rope in Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon. The Brent crude and West Texas intermediate, the two major global benchmarks, as you can see, uh, both uh, trading uh, significantly higher this Wednesday, uh, with prices hovering around uh, $80 a barrel for the Brent crude and $70 six dollars a barrel for the West uh, Texas Intermediate. Uh, this kind of conflict in a region that produces about a third of the world's uh, crude is really raising fears over the ability to produce and export oil, especially uh, from Iran. Some traders are also concerned uh, this could lead to more attacks on ships traveling through the Red Sea. All in all, though, it's important to note that the general trend on oil prices has been one of depreciating prices because of subdued demand, especially from China. Uh, the Brent is actually set for its biggest drop in prices this year in spite of OPEC plus uh, supply curbs. Now, something else that's been supporting uh, oil prices has been the expectation, anyway, that the U.S. Federal Reserve will cut its interest rates. Mm -hmm. Lower interest rates, uh, interest rates uh, would... Uh, would mean the cost of financing uh, would be lower, which could spur on the in investment, which in turn could spur on demand for an energy and oil in particular. The uh, U.S. Federal Reserve concludes a meeting uh, later this Wednesday in which it is expected to announce that short-term interest rates will stay where they've been in the past year or so, but it's also expected that there will be stronger signals that a rate, could, a rate cut could be in the works for September based off of encouraging inflation data, which is showing that price increases are getting closer to a 2% annual target set by the Fed. Uh, this could potentially conclude a trend of higher interest rates set in motion post-COVID and post-Russia and Ukraine war when inflation went soaring uh, globally. And while the uh, U.S. Federal Reserve is looking towards lowering rates, well, Japan's central bank, they're going the other way, aren't they? Mm -hmm. The Bank of Japan uh, really has uh, been an outlier uh, when it comes uh, to uh, central banks in recent years, favoring ultra-loose monetary policies, uh, partly because it had previously been facing deflation and because it wanted to boost growth. But that is changing as the central bank is unwinding this massive monetary easing policy this Wednesday, hiking interest rates for only the second time in 17 years and indicating plans for more uh, rate hikes. Uh, the interest rate now stands at about 0.25%. Uh, uh, well, the reasons for this, uh, well, this particular monetary policy made the local currency, the yen, very weak against the U.S. dollar, which in turn made imports more expensive, especially energy imports, which represent about almost all of its uh, energy supply, which drove up inflation above the bank's target. And as, uh, let's take a look now uh, at how the yen is faring against the dollar after this decision. We're seeing that one dollar is worth 152 uh, yen, and that's uh, significantly uh, lower than it was at the opening of the session before that uh, rate cut had been announced. Sean, thanks very much. Sean Pellegram with the business news for us here on France 24. You're watching Daybreak.